G'day everybody, Nick Dingle here again for another Construct 2 tutorial. This time we are having a look at the program in its first use. So just having a look at the interface, the different parts of it, and explaining things in a little bit of vague details before we go into actually using the bad boy. So if you are not interested in just looking at the interface and playing around with it, please skip straight to the next video where we're going to make a Pong game from scratch. But for right now, let's just have a look at this thing here. Now, there are lots of different things that you can access. There are tutorials on the web. There are lots of examples. And if you haven't bought a license, please do it. But I'm going to go, OK, let's go. Here is the first screen that you are ever going to see when you use Construct, or when you use Construct generally. You can make new projects. You can have a look at examples, recent projects if you've got some, and use for links. Now, if you had a license you installed, it should appear down the bottom right here. If it doesn't, if it says free license, please check where you put your C2 license file and make sure it's in the right folder. But from this point, let's get right into it and let's open up a brand new project so we can look at all the different parts of this interface because you can see right now, I can't really interact with anything whatsoever. So if you click on new project, you've got a lot of options here. You've got a crap load of options. But basically you've got empty projects all the way down here Okay, all the way down. I would suggest you have a quick look at those. Empty project is nothing inside of it. Retro style project, so things like you want pixelated or smooth scaling, things like that. Okay, you've got different, um, what's the word, aspect ratios for different types of projects. So 4 by 3 project is a normal square monitor. 16 by 9 is the size of the screen you're looking at right now. 720 project, 1080 project. Okay, example, example, example. The next thing that I like the look of is they've got heaps and heaps of built-in templates. And the great thing about these templates is they've already got predefined programming for you to use. So I'm just going to select the platformer. I'm going to click open and we're going to get straight into it. So let's break down the interface. At the top, if you've ever used Microsoft Office, you have the ribbon bar. The ribbon bar has pretty specific buttons on it. It doesn't have everything that you'd expect. The first, the home button, is simply got your clipboard, your undos, your selection buttons, and your configurations, which by default you only have one. Online buttons to access different parts of the Skira website. Even the Skira store, which is a pretty new feature of the Skira website, it's pretty good. It's got music, assets, programming, uh, projects even with open source. They're pretty good to have a look at if you're willing to fork out a little bit of money for them. You've got the preview sections for actually playing your project, and you've got the start page for Construct. This is the page I'm talking about. Anyway, let's go back to layout. On the left-hand side, oh, sorry, I should talk about the view. The view is basically the interface for Construct. So if there's a couple of bars that you don't see that you want, or there's a couple of bars that you see that you don't want, that's what you just select here. Zooming in and out, okay, you can set to 100% or out so you can see the whole thing or in. The grids, okay, the grid is for snapping. What you see here, this um, green boxes is not the grid. Ticking that is the grid. You can change the size of the grid. I would suggest sticking to a power of two, okay, and that's going to change different things. So 64 by 64 is another power of two, and I could go... Let's go back to 16 by 16. Untick that. Skipping over style quickly. Show poly, uh, polygon that. Show collision polys. As you can see, when I tick that, you get a little red line. And this is what the objects are going to collide with. So that red line around there is going to collide with that red line around there. And then you've got translucent act, inactive layers. I'll explain that at a later video when we talk about layers. Now, style is simply the style of construct. I generally just go with basic, but you could go with, this, say, Visual Studio with the 2012 lights or the 2012 blue. It's entirely up to you. Okay, let's have a look at some of these bad boys. I don't particularly like many of these. The office is okay. I think they're all a little bit overrated, to be completely honest. Sorry, it's Kira, if you're watching. But... That's pretty much the basic one. So I'm just going to stick with the 2010 silver. That was the default one. So we're just going to sit with that. All right. And finally, the events window. This is when you are working on an event sheet, when you're programming or scripting, whatever you want to call it. These buttons will become active for adding, for bookmarking, breakpointing, and searching. So they're very, very handy, actually, when you're using this tab here. 
In fact, you can hide all of this bad boy by clicking this little button over here. It's called the pin ribbon, and it just toggles whether or not it's open or closed, and that's it. Now, what you see in the middle here is what you call your layout. Layout is just a different word for level, okay? It is where you put in your objects, it is where you put in your uh, sprites and different things like that, and you start designing your level, I guess. And you can click on objects, you can drag them around. Okay, let me undo that, put it back in its place. And then you've got another tab up here you can see, which is Event Sheet. This is your programming, and you can see how straightforward this is. Okay, when down is pressed, fall through a jump through platform. When W is down, simulate a jump. When A is down, simulate pressing left. This is how straightforward this is. Okay, these little yellow boxes are comments that have been put in by the developers. Mirror the player's image so they're facing the right way when moving left or right. When they're pressing the left arrow or A, mirror. When they're pressing right or D, not mirrored. That's how easy this construct is. Okay, I'd really suggest you have a play around with this. Okay, so on the right hand side I have my projects panel. Now the projects panel is your every project that is open at the moment and it's every single object that's inside your project. So by default you have a layout one, which is your first level, and event sheet one, which is what you already saw, the programming for layout one. Now, you then have object types. Object types can be many different things, and we're going to talk about this, but these are all the things that I can use in my levels. So I've got backgrounds and jump-throughs and different solid tiles, and then text box, which appears just up here on the left. There it is. Okay, and as I said, you've then got, whoops, I accidentally dragged that. I'll show you that in a second. Family, sounds, music, and different things. Okay. Down the bottom, objects. It might seem repetitive to have objects up here and objects down here. But what this is showing me, all layout one objects. So it's showing me what objects I'm using on the layout. And if I click on them, you can see it selects the objects which I've used. All right. Select them and it highlights the ones that are being used in the layout. All right. Just a quick way of selecting things there. You then have a couple of little hidden tabs. You have layers which are different levels in which you can, if you've ever used Photoshop with layers, it's exactly what you're thinking. If you've never used it and you don't know what it is, it's a way of organizing some of your content. So if I want to organize my different shapes and different things into different levels and lock them off, you can do it here. So you can see they've got a background layer, a game layer, which would include the tiles and the player, and the UI, which would include probably just this message box. As you can see, it says layer UI. We'll talk about this kind of stuff in a sec. And then you've got a tile map. Now this is useful for when you're doing a tiled game where you want to paint your world. Similar to like Zelda, A Link to the Past, or something similar to that. I can't think of another example off the top of my head. Anyway, I've been talking lots. I want to show you one last thing before we play the game, and that is the properties panel and how important this guy is. Now the first property you should always change is your project name, because by default it's a new project. So many times I've gotten assessments and games from kids and it's still called new project. Please click on up here where it says the folder new project and you can see the properties panel that has all the properties for your game. It has the name, it has the version, the description, the author, pretty important sometimes, website and then default settings for your layouts. Okay, so I suggest you really have a look at these different things here and have a play around with them. So if you want to call your project something, you just simply click on the box and you type in platformer. And that's going to set it. And you can see at the top right there in projects, it says platformer as well. Okay. Same thing if I click on a layout, it's going to give me the settings for just the layout. So I can change the size of the layout. Press the plus to have a look at what properties there are individually. So you've got your width and your height. Same with the margins, width and height. And then you've got effects that you can add to your layout as well. Now, you've got a name and an event sheet and the active layer. I'm just going to leave them there for the moment because we're going to use them in future videos. And if I keep on going through, you can see I've got properties for everything. For backgrounds, it's got the position, it's size. You've got jump through tiles, same thing again. And, and then you've got things like keyboard, which don't have many properties. Okay. That's the quick breakdown of the interface and all the different panels. I know it was pretty boring, but basically if we hit run layouts, you can either hit it on there on your ribbon or you can press it up here. The next one will play your project as well, but let's just have a look at it in action. This is the platformer. We 
we can jump around, we can access different platforms. So you can see those are the jump through platforms. If I press down, I fall through them. And win. And let's just fall forever and restart. Okay, so that is the basic run through of Construct. That's how you play your projects. I can click debug layout, and this is what I get down the bottom. Lots of information about what's going on, what's happening to different things. I can click on individual objects, such as the player, and it shows me, as you can see, the X position, the speed of the player, the sprite, different things that I want to see if I'm having issues and I want to access them. Anyway, I'm pretty much going to leave it at that, and we're going to jump into our Pong making in the next video. So I hope you enjoyed this video somewhat, even though it was a little bit, I suppose, tedious. But for the moment, thank you for watching, everybody. Like, subscribe, comment down the bottom, and I'll see you in the next one. Catch ya.